Right, I'm Josh from Cyclones Oz, and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Thursday, the 6th of June 2025. A lot to get through in today's forecast update. We've had that massive extra tropical cyclone race through the Tasman Sea and deliver an absolute hiding to New Zealand overnight. It's still dragging up a vigorous polar air mass coming up from behind it, which is why temperatures are stone cold across New South Wales and Victoria this morning. And we've also got some strong winds and heavy showers still moving alongside the New South Wales coastline forecast. But let's get stuck straight into things today over in the Tasman to see where the screen is currently centered. So just well outside of the Tasman to see, just get an understanding of what weather is occurring across Eastern Australia at this point of time. We've got that very powerful extra tropical cyclone now moving towards the southeast of the South Island of New Zealand. A pressure of 974 millibars still strengthening. It is an absolute brute of a system, that's for sure. Now, if this system hung around New Zealand for much longer, we'd have some pretty significant damage to be reporting on through the South Island of New Zealand. But thankfully, this system, as strong as it was, it's also been very quick and it's moved through the South Island pretty quickly and more or less hassle th uh, free overnight. They had some pretty gnarly wind gusts up to around 130 to 135 kilometers an hour but they're now beginning to ease off and this system is rapidly pulling away from New Zealand. In its wake though it's bringing up a vigorous polar air mass coming out of the south with some strong winds adjacent to the New South Wales east coast. You can see winds outside of the, uh, uh, Morton Island, I forgot the name for a second, of southeast Queensland, 68 kilometers an hour coming out of the south and winds 50 kilometers an hour uh, just offshore from the southeast of Victoria there. A couple of observations still suggesting some rather strong winds and it looks like another low pressure system is also beginning to develop halfway between Norfolk Island and Lord Howe Island at this point in time. Again these systems aren't anything of a concern to the east, uh, east coast of Australia but they are going to have an influence on the weather over the next couple of days with a few showers still lingering here and there. That low pressure system between Norfolk Island and Lord Howe Island not expected to get us act together in a significant fashion and it looks like for the most part the Tasman Sea is going to remain calm throughout the remainder of this week and into this weekend conditions are easing off now. Now. And the severe weather that we saw along the New South Wales East Coast, damaging winds and large surf looks to be pretty much all but said and done at this point in time. And there's nothing in the way of significant severe weather or strong low pressure systems for that matter in the Tasman Sea until at least mid to late June at this point in time. The fact that we don't have any East Coast lows on the forecast as well is kind of a blessing at this point in time. I was expecting East Coast low activity at some point in June and we haven't had anything in June so far, given that it's only been five days. Of course, we haven't had anything, but there's nothing on the forecast either going out to the 20th day of June. So I do imagine we'll start to see a little bit more of a turbulent weather period come in into the later parts of June or into the early parts of July for New South Wales, Queensland, and maybe Victoria as well. But at this point in time, it's still a little bit too early to tell. And that's the details on the uh, weather scene over in uh, the coastal parts of New South Wales, Queensland, and Victoria. There's not an awful lot more to be talking about, but we do have some heavy rainfall now for a wide swathe of southeastern Australia. Just before we get to that heavy rainfall, it is a cold morning. And when I say a cold morning, I do not use that term lightly. My Minus 7 degrees this morning at Goldburn. Uh, that will be one of their coldest mornings on record there. Uh, and widespread temperatures dropping below minus 2 or minus 3, pushing minus 4 in places as well. Even outside of elevated areas, outside of Hillston and Cobar, we've got temperatures here at minus 4 degrees. We're not exactly sure where that is. Minus 4 in Ballarat this morning in Victoria, minus 3 in Horsham. It is extremely cold across interior parts of New South Wales and Victoria as such severe frosts are currently unfolding there. Uh, and if it was later on in the season, if we were talking about August or September, we'd be expecting total crop failures as a result of these temperatures. So uh, very lucky that we're not in that time of the year right now because that would be an absolute disaster, that's for sure. Anyways, rainfall. Let's talk about it right now. So just leaving the southwest of Western Australia into the Great Australian Bight, we've got a weak uh, low pressure system now moving further south. And that's dragging some rainfall in behind it, which is moving through South Australia later on tonight into early tomorrow morning. Some moderate showers can be expected through the Air Peninsula and then extending into the York Peninsula and the Flinders Ranges through tomorrow morning. Um, morning into tomorrow afternoon before that frontal system crosses into the southeastern corner of South Australia, which could deliver up to 15 millimetres tomorrow evening. And then those showers are going to begin to pipe up for the south coast of Victoria. This is going to be kind of a two, maybe even a three stage weather system. So pay close attention here because there's going to be different parts and different uh, aspects of weather coming in over the course of the remainder of this week and into next uh, this coming weekend. So that low pressure system diving down towards the south through Friday, taking the rainfall with it, a few showers lingering here and there through Friday night into Saturday morning and we're expecting the snow to pipe up through Friday night through the elevated areas into the snowy mountains and across Tasmania. 
And then we're expecting a low pressure system to sweep up from the south, delivering some rainfall and showers, which are going to progressively get heavier through Saturday and into Sunday. This low pressure system, quite intense one, 990 millibars here, situated between uh, Tasmania and Victoria in the Bass Strait. And that's just expected to drag up showers and moisture from the south, which is going to give way to damaging winds, cool temperatures, and of course, much needed rainfall to the southwest coast of Victoria and the southeast coast of South Australia. Unfortunately, the rainfall isn't going to penetrate too far inland. And we're talking about showers here, not a massive weather system coming through which means that the coastal areas are going to get drenched and there's going to be plenty of rainfall to talk about there in fact potentially 100 millimeters coming through this weekend in a similar fashion to the rainfall that we've seen over in southwestern WA but the rainfall isn't going to be anything too flashy as you get further inland still those showers expected to continue through Sunday and with these low pressure systems lingering into Monday and Tuesday rainfall will continue through parts of Victoria and much of the east coast of Tasmania through Tuesday right out towards Wednesday before being moved along on Thursday and Friday by another weak cold front uh, which could deliver some more much needed rainfall to interior parts of Victoria. But the main headlines right now is yes, there's plenty of rainfall expect or plenty of locations expecting some rainfall. We're going to be talking about widespread falls through much of Victoria between that 10 to 25 millimeter mark. But the best of the rainfall is going to be reserved for those coastal locations, which, as I've mentioned, could see up to 100 millimeters of rainfall uh, just this week and then into early next week alone. Let's take a look at those five day rainfall accumulations now between this Friday and next Tuesday. Like I said, rainfall accumulations between that 10 to 25 millimeter mark through interior parts of Victoria and much heavier rainfall expected through the high country and down onto the south coast. Rainfall will be marginally heavier through the southeast corner of South Australia. We're expecting falls between 25 to 50 millimeters through uh, those regions and again heavier falls up to 100 millimeters possible along the coastline around Robe and Mount Gambier. Falls between 40 to uh, 50 or 60 millimeters possible around the Adelaide area, 20 to 40 millimeters expected through parts of the Flinders Ranges, the York Peninsula, and then 10 to, 10 to 20 millimeters expected through the southern tip of the Air Peninsula and about five millimetres or so through the remainder of the Air Peninsula and extending north up to about Sejuna, Streaky Bay and then up towards Lake Torrens and Roxby Downs. So like I said, rainfall, nothing too flash, nothing drought busting for some of these regions, but there will be some places, especially along the coastline, that get some much needed rainfall, that's for sure. And as we've been talking about, uh, especially yesterday, there's going to be plenty of snowfall coming through as well for the high peaks and expecting the ski resorts to get an absolute dumping of snowfall uh, coming through just this weekend alone. So uh, if we take Take a look at the snowfall accumulation map during that same period, that five day period between Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, the 6th to the 10th of June. We're expecting some very healthy falls through some of the high peaks uh, here with snowfall expected to be uh, falling as low as about five or 600 meters through parts of New South Wales, down to 500 meters in Victoria, and potentially as low as 400 meters in uh, Tasmania. I hope I've been saying meters. I've got it in my head that I was just saying millimeters there, but I do mean meters. But you can see 40 to 50 centimeters coming through for some of the higher peaks through uh, New South Wales, uh, between 20 to 40 centimetres coming through over the, some of the high peaks of Victoria and then just some sporadic falls here and there extending down towards Melbourne or into the Dandenong uh, mountain regions and a couple of dustings also expected onto some of the highest hills above four or 500 metres through uh, regional parts of Victoria as well. Uh, ignore these little blotches of snowfall here that the forecast models are suggesting. The East Mabeth is notorious for presenting a few chances of snowfall onto some of the lower low lying locations through Victoria and South Australia at this time of the year. I don't expect snowfall at any point through South Australia. I'm not not even sure if South Australia's ever recorded snowfall either. And we're not expecting snowfall through Victoria's uh, lower regions and the agricultural regions. Tasmania could see a couple of centimetres here and there, but it's not going to be as heavy as what we're expecting through New South Wales and Victoria. But for those in the higher regions, the ski resorts get excited, plenty of snowfall coming. And like I said, plenty of rainfall also on the way as well. If we just check back with the drought monitoring map, you can see drought intensity right now, severe, exceptional, and little pockets of extreme drought conditions from the worst on record that they've seen through much of Victoria. Victoria. As we push this out towards next Thursday or Friday, the drought is going to be well and truly on the mend. It's not going to be completely quenched through parts of Victoria, and I don't want to get don't want to get people's hopes up, suggesting that the rainfall that's coming through just this week is going to uh, quench all of the drought across much of Victoria. They're still going to be very far behind on rainfall in comparison to the average year, but it will go uh, a long way. This rainfall that's coming through will do wonders for regional parts of Victoria that do desperately need this rainfall. Uh, so very very good to see that for sure. Uh, this rainfall here. It cannot come at a better time either. Uh, the farmers, they're in absolute desperate need for the rainfall. They're in dire straits right now. So the rainfall is, like I said, going to be very, very helpful. That's for sure. 
looking a little bit more forward for South Australia or Southeastern Australia, there will be a little bit more follow-up rainfall as well. We're expecting steady uh, inflows of frontal systems through mid-June and in towards late June. We're probably going to be talking about some kind of positive southern annular mode, which is going to keep things a little bit drier and could enhance moisture a little bit for the New South Wales East Coast as we get out towards late June. But the forecast to that is still a little bit murky at this time. But for the most part, over the next two weeks, expect a steady influx of rainfall, especially out to about the 15th or the 16th of June, and then conditions might start to dry up a little bit across southeastern Australia. Southwestern Australia, definitely looking forward to a couple of days of dry weather. They're not going to be uh, too uh, far away. We are expecting conditions to begin to dry out today and into tomorrow as well. That high pressure ridge rapidly building already. That's in the wake of some very heavy rainfall accumulations though. Now, a lot of places have actually missed out on some decent rainfall, especially further out into the wheat belt. We were never expecting heavy rainfall accumulations through much of the wheat belt, but through parts of the southwest, into the, especially suburban Perth, into the northern suburbs, 30 to 50 millimetres was what we ended up with over three days of what was meant to be some very heavy rainfall. Don't be fooled though, plenty of places also picked up some torrential rainfall accumulations. There are a lot of personal weather stations that have seen more than 100 millimetres over the last three days, mine included south of Perth, but there were also some more disappointing rainfall accumulations, especially with what this event was uh, not hyped up to be. We always knew that the rainfall was going to be hit and miss, but this is a classic case of when we're talking about a shower event, rainfall is going to be a little bit more sporadic and a little bit more spread out uh, unevenly. This was never Never going to be a major severe weather front and as such we weren't expecting guaranteed heavy rainfall accumulations across much of the uh, across much of the southwest rainfall was still heavy for a lot of locations but also for some locations it wasn't what it was forecast to be at this point in time we do have a little bit more rainfall coming through in towards mid next week another frontal system approaching the southwest on monday and into tuesday crossing the coast on tuesday and a few showers expected to linger in towards wednesday before another cold front sweeps up from the south on friday this one could be a little bit stronger with a potential 25 millimeter a dump on the way Friday just in time for next weekend and then out towards Saturday showers clearing Sunday a couple of showers here and there and a strong high pressure ridge then beginning to build and then Monday and Tuesday another cold front coming through this one very weak by the looks of things and then weakening, weakening quite quickly as it gets further inland another cold front coming through on the 18th and the 19th of June respectively but all of that is going to lead up to some more respectable rainfall accumulations across the southwest of WA and you can see 14 day rainfall accumulations which isn't inclusive of the rainfall that has already fallen um, uh, between sort of that 40 to 80 millimetre mark across much of the southwest regions and again up to 100 millimetres for some locations especially along the south coast which could be looking at up to 125 millimetres of rainfall in the next 14 days. Heavy rainfall accumulations also expected further inland into some of the hillier regions adjacent to Perth, Mandra and Bunbury and because this is going to be more frontal based rainfall the heavier falls could make it a little bit further out into the wheat belt with up to 50 millimetres on the cards for some wheat belt communities such as Brookton, Pingley and Wandering and then falls between 10 to 25 millimetres millimetres expected further inland right through Great Eastern Highway out to uh, as far out toward oh, as far out towards the east as Coolgardie by the looks of things up to about 10 millimetres possible out there. Rainfall kind of stopping along that line between Calbarry down towards Esperance. The decent falls not expected to penetrate too far inland from there but for the most part a very wide swathe at least 70% of the weed build can expect between 10 to 25 millimetres and then some of the higher accumulations expected into the so-called God's Country in the southwest of the weed belt, which could be looking at up to 50 or 60 millimetres of rainfall. Whilst we're not in full-blown drought conditions, we still have some rainfall uh, um, uh, deficiencies across the southwest of Western Australia, especially into the Perth region. The rainfall hasn't uh, kind of built up to where it's supposed to be for this time of the year. My rain gauge is telling me that we've had 200 millimetres in my location, but we've had some pretty heavy thunderstorms move through at some uh, times during, some of the, in, during the summer months, and that also includes the 125 millimetres that we've had uh, over the last couple of days as well. So we're still talking about some pretty serious rainfall discrepancies deficiencies rather across the southwest of WA and you can see that quite clearly on the drought monitoring map. Some more rainfall would be very very welcome especially at this time of the year as well. It looks like that uh, kind of rainfall deficiencies will probably uh, be on the way out as we get out towards mid-June at the absolute latest in towards late June with a pretty steady influx of rainfall expected over the next 14 days or so so that's some very good news for those regions that's for sure. In terms of other rainfall accumulation pockets or hot spots for rainfall over the next 14 days, as you'd expect for this time of the year, not an awful lot to be talking about. A few showers and storms moving through into the uh, Pilbara and the Kimberley region today of Western Australia, but apart from that, the tropics through WA, the Northern Territory and Queensland remaining high and dry. Uh, robust high pressure systems over the top of them, which is keeping the nights cool, the days mild and the skies very clear. Well and truly in the dry season at this point in time, still a few more showers here and there coming out of the south uh, east, uh, yes, the south 
Southeast East rather for far north Queensland, they could be looking at up to 50 millimetres, potentially up towards 80 millimetres through parts of the Casper Coast over the next 14 days. Again, a drop in the ocean to the wet season rainfall, but still a few more drops possible there. And depending on what we see in towards late June, if we do get a positive southern annular mode, which could drag down some moisture through the Coral Sea, it looks like rainfall is going to remain out of Queensland for the most part over the next 14 days, at least, at least from what the forecast models are suggesting at this point in time. But interesting stuff nonetheless. I feel like that was a very comprehensive look at the Australian weather scene. If you have enjoyed this forecast update, then please do let me know in the comment section down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already as well. The support lately has been much appreciated. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And I could not run the show without them. So again, their support is much appreciated as well. Uh, like I said, you could not run the show without them. So thank you so much to all of the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. But that is going to be all for me today. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.